So you're excited to get started with Microsoft 365 Copilot. You want to roll it out to a subset of users in your organization to prepare, to learn, and to be really successful with AI at work. If you want to do this, what you need to do is you need to prepare for Copilot. And of course, you need to understand what makes a good Microsoft Copilot pilot. And that's what I want to share today. The first thing that you need to understand with Microsoft Copilot pilots is that you're talking about a major exponential change. This means because it's not a linear change or an incremental one, there's a lot more questions, a lot more to learn, and a lot more to listen for. And this means you need to be proactive in your pilot. We can't just have simple training or enabling of licenses and some communication, we need to do more for our pilots to be successful. Now we've learned the hard way with customers that there's a right way to do pilots. And I'm going to share a couple of things that differentiate that today. The first one is that when you think about your target audience for your pilot, the stakeholders who are pilot stakeholders, we want to make sure as much as possible, they are distributed across the organization. It's very tempting to use just HR or IT, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it's much better for us to have a wider variety of potential use cases, more variety and velocity in terms of collaboration and communication patterns. And you get that when you have a more diversified group and population for your pilot. So I would really encourage that. Now you might be saying, well, how do we make sure we figure out the right people for that? I would also encourage you to look at those who are we call super collaborators. The collaboration value in the organization is driven by these people. They're linchpins. You know, you probably know some of these people. You reach out to them when you're trying to get help with something uh, or people reach out to you. Maybe you are one of those linchpins. And so these people are great uh, audience uh, members or great participants for your pilot because they are the ones that have digital debt and they have a need for not just Microsoft Copilot but experiences like Microsoft Teams Premium or Microsoft Viva or just better digital excellence and digital fitness support from the organization. And so these individuals, what you're going to do is you're going to target them because if we use and uplift their skills, the impact of that is higher. The ROI is actually higher because of the kind of collaborative impact they have on the organization. But also it's better because most people already defer to them. So if we make our initial pilot groups as much as possible represent some of these people, then in the next phase, because we're going to do rolling pilots most likely, in the next phase, the next group is going to be better supported by this initial group, right, that you've taught, you've uh, supported. And that's kind of how you distribute AI across time over the organization. People learn from one another. Now, this makes a lot of sense for another reason. When you are learning Microsoft Copilot experiences, you're learning with your peers. Now, of course, Microsoft has things like the Copilot Labs experience, which you'll roll out alongside Copilot, giving people ideas for prompting that they can do and just being really inspiring for what else they can do with these technologies. You will not struggle with people being excited and trying new things. This is one of those technologies that really does capture the imagination and makes people very excited. But giving them prompts can make sure that those initial experiments that they do with productivity have positive outcomes. We all know when you change something like productivity, there's a dip before you get an improved experience on productivity on the other side. And when we manage change, we're trying to make that dip as shallow as possible and as short as possible. That's why we manage change. This is why it's critical not just to have things like Copilot Labs available to all users, but to have communities, champion frameworks, and of course, to treat this as a experience, a pilot especially, that's supported heavily through the use of sharing and champions and communities. Don't just have training sessions, but also have you know office hours, also have meetings where we talk about not necessarily how to use it exactly, but what are people using it for and learn from one another. Foster and develop that because that will sustain far beyond the initial training you do. And it will always be more up to date and representative of what's really happening in the organization and what lessons we're learning than just the training might. Now let's talk about training because that is actually important. One thing that I'm going to highly encourage is that your training is not Microsoft Copilot Basics, Microsoft Copilot Advanced. You shouldn't do that. Instead, your training should be things like how to make meetings better. And it just so happens that there's a big chunk of Copilot training in there, but there's also helping people understand Teams Premium or how maybe uh, to prepare before a meeting using SharePoint and Teams and Outlook scheduling and all sorts of things, how to prepare after a meeting or uh, use the meeting outcomes after. So creating action items, using planner, all those types of things. And of course, what we do during the meeting. And the reason that's important is because you're gonna use Copilot in each of those stages before, during and after a meeting. 
And it's much more enticing to go learn how to improve meetings and how we work around meetings than it is to just go learn a technical tool like Copilot. Now, I'm not saying you couldn't have Copilot specific training, but when you package it this way, it will have much more resiliency and long-term value in the organization, and it will better fit a better model for training because remember, this initial group probably does have a lot of excitement and interest around Copilot, but as we scale this across the organization for rolling pilots, that may not be as true. And we wanna improve this. We wanna improve this training regularly. So having it be things like working with documents and we do another revision of that where we have another plan of how to make working with documents better, people might be really interested in re-engaging with that training at a later date. And it might have all sorts of things, not just Copilot experiences, but how to use Microsoft Loop or other capabilities to improve how we work around documents as an example. So think about the training and the way you do your modules, break it up, of course, but also think about how can we make it a little bit more resilient, a little bit more appealing, and a little bit more scenario driven, which you'll find will actually lead to easier training for Copilot because you could train on literally everything if you don't. And it will also make those uh, recordings more useful for longer periods of time. Because that's what we want to do is we want people to come back to them, look at them, maybe they miss the training, maybe they want to participate in the next training, right? So we're going to run these again and again with multiple signups to create demand. And those types of subjects are going to create, we find, better demand over time than just a co-pilot or AI based one. Now, the last category of preparation, you've got your figured out your stakeholders, you figured out how to like support them during this pilot, you figured even out how to like structure that. Now what we need to do is we need to make sure that we have uh, data monitoring in place. Now this is an important thing that you should have regardless of what pilot we're doing. But with co-pilot, what's going to happen is people are going to have more visibility to things that they already have access to. So again, Copilot doesn't give you access to new things. What it does is it means that when I go to search for something today in Microsoft Search, you might be able to find it. But people don't really use Microsoft Search very often, right? So we think, oh, this content's protected because it's in a secure private team. But what if a piece of that content in that private team has been shared with everyone? That means you use the shared with everyone link, which is actually something a lot of users do. They quickly want to share it. They don't want to figure out like, should I share it with this particular person? They might not have a time delay where it expires that sharing link. So they quickly just say share with everyone. And when they do that, now this will be discoverable, not just by search, but by Copilot. And because it's discoverable about Copilot and it's been shared with everyone, including the person who's doing this testing with Copilot, they may see content that they shouldn't have. Not because they are doing something wrong, but because the person who originally shared that used the shared with everyone link, but didn't think of the consequences or ramification. The good news here is you actually have tools out of the box in things like the Microsoft SharePoint Admin Center, like these shared with everyone link reports, where you can see where that is occurring, who is doing that sharing, and you can take proactive action to secure and make things more confidential or private. This is a great opportunity to package essentially what is a data monitoring and purview and organizational compliance and security motion along with your pilot of Microsoft Copilot. This is a great opportunity to teach us how do we use these tools and more importantly, better secure our organization because that security risk is already there today during this Copilot and then hopefully after it um, in a continual basis, you'll be finding new ways to do security attestation with third party or with Microsoft tools or with external support so that you can make sure your organization is compliant, secure, and safe. One last comment that I have is when you roll out a pilot with Microsoft Copilot, it's really critical that the people who are leading this and the people that are in that pilot community and group have access to the latest AI policies, the latest AI guidance, and of course, common questions and answers around responsible AI and what our intentions are with tools like Microsoft 365 Copilot. Because other people are going to ask them questions. They're going to say, I want to get on Copilot. When can I get on it? And you need to be able to be ready, not just for the senior leadership and other people in this category, but everyone in that pilot audience should have access to those answers. So we're consistently providing the same confidence and direction to the organization. I hope this has been helpful for you. I'm really excited for you to get your hands on Copilot and start to use it to transform the way you work, the way your teams work, and the way your organization works. So get started with Microsoft Copilot and if possible, use friends and help. Microsoft has funding programs to help larger customers with Microsoft Copilot uh, pilots. Uh, we actually get a lot of funding from Microsoft to support those engagements. Uh, we are a partner who helps with these things. So if you need help like figuring out the project plan or you need help with specific elements like the learning, and things like that, please reach out to a company, if not us, a great Microsoft partner and get help. Don't do this alone. 
because when you're successful with a co-pilot pilot, it's all about the community and those you bring along with you. Thanks so much, everyone, for your time.